Então, boa tarde a todas, todos, todes. É, eu sou a professora Fabíola Calazan, sou professora e pesquisadora da linha de imagem, estética e cultura contemporânea do Programa de Pós-Graduação da Faculdade de Comunicação da Universidade de Brasília. Então, sejam todas, todos, todes muito bem-vindos, bem-vindas, bem-vindos a esse primeiro ciclo de palestras interlinhas do PPPG com FAC. Lembro que este ciclo tem dupla finalidade, é ao mesmo tempo uma disciplina cursada por estudantes regulares do PPG e também oferece à comunidade acadêmica um conjunto de palestras que espelha as pesquisas em desenvolvimento no âmbito do programa é, nas nossas duas linhas de pesquisa, Imagem, Estética e Cultura Contemporânea, da qual eu, professora Gabriela Freitas, que farei a apresentação em breve, fazemos parte, e a linha Poder e Processos Comunicacionais. Esta disciplina compreende uma abordagem comunicacional interdisciplinar e crítica das diferentes interfaces relacionadas aos principais temas estudados nas duas linhas de pesquisa do PPG, por meio da realização de palestras com professores do PPG-COM e parceiros de redes nacionais e internacionais. A sétima palestra do ciclo tem como tema Estética e Cinema Expandido e conta com a participação do professor Joel Anderson, da Senior University, e da professora Gabriela Freitas, da linha Imagem, Estética e Cultura Contemporânea, do nosso PPG-FAC, como moderadora desta tarde. As perguntas podem ser enviadas pelo chat do YouTube, que serão repassadas aos palestrantes. Apresento primeiramente o currículo da minha amiga e colega, a professora Gabriela. Então, Gabriela Freitas, seja muito bem-vinda. É, a professora Gabriela ela é professora adjunta da Faculdade de Comunicação da Universidade de Brasília, professora e pesquisadora do Programa de Pós-Graduação da FAC, líder do grupo de pesquisa vinculado ao CNPq, o GCAI, Grupo de Estudos sobre Espaço, Corpo, Arte e Estética, é doutora em comunicação pela Universidade de Brasília, em 2014, com período de sanduíche na Sorbonne, tem pós-doutorado pela SUNY Purchase, é, concluído em 2021, realiza pesquisas nas seguintes áreas, estética, arte mídia, fotografia e campos expandidos, noções de espaço e paisagem, hibridismo entre linguagens artísticas, com ênfase em intervenções urbanas. Então, agradeço especialmente a você, professora Gabriela, professora Joel Anderson, bem como a nossa monitora Cristiane Araújo e a aluna Aline Soares pelo apoio. Cumprimento a todos os ouvintes, todas as ouvintes, todos os ouvintes que nos acompanham na sala pelo canal FAC no YouTube e desejo a todas uma tarde proveitosa. Lembro que as perguntas podem ser feitas via chat no YouTube, tanto em português como em inglês. Passo agora a palavra à professora Gabriela, quem apresentará o nosso palestrante de hoje, o professor Joel Anderson. Então, sejam bem-vindos. Obrigada pela parceria, Gabriela. Obrigada, Fabiola. Obrigada, professor Joel Anderson. É, queria agradecer também a presença da Cris, da Aline, que estão aqui nos dando suporte. Né? Nós estamos aqui no... no na, 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 nessa transmissão aqui pelo Google Meet, com esse suporte delas, né? vocês nos vendo aí no YouTube. Então, é um grande prazer ter aqui o professor Joel Anderson, que tive a oportunidade de conhecer durante o meu pós-doutorado na SUNY, ah, em Nova York, e é, vou apresentá-lo a vocês antes de passar a palavra a ele. Tá? O professor Joel Anderson é professor da Cinema Studies and Film, Uh, college, uh, Portage College, na State University of New York. E suas pesquisas e ensino abrangem a questão do documentário pessoal, mídia comunitária, filme e vídeo experimental, justiça ambiental, cinema japonês e estudos de festivais de cinema. E muitos artigos do professor Anderson aparecem na Studies in Documentary Film, Millennium Film Journal, International Feminist Journal of Politics, After Image Hyperallergic, eh, Hyperallergic, Senses of Cinema, Film, um, Senses of Cinema, Film on the Fault Line and Rutledge Handbook of Japanese Cinema. Seu trabalho foi apoiado pelo Flattery uh, Seminar, Signal Culture, uh, Society for Cinema and Media Studies, and Susan B. Anthony Institute for Gender, Sexuality and Women's Studies. Ele programou também o festival Japan Cuts, que é o Festival of New Japanese Film, que é o maior festival de cinema japonês contemporâneo da América do Norte entre os anos de 2014 e 2021. 
É, a minha interação com eles será em inglês. Se tiverem qualquer dúvida, também podem se manifestar no YouTube. E se e alguma coisa não ficar clara, a gente pode parar e deixar um pouco mais claro. E como a professora Fabiola colocou, as perguntas serão enviadas no chat por vocês e vão chegar a nós e eu vou fazendo essa mediação com o professor Joel Anderson. É, então, um, Joel, it's um, really nice to have you here today. So, thank you very much for accepting our, our invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you again. Uh, now, not in New York. Now, it's like in Brazil, uh, me in Brazilia and you in New York. So, um, we are going to talk about expanded and experimental film and cinema today. So, it's really a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. Uh, th thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Gabriela, Professor Freitas, um, and thank you to Professor Calazans uh, as well. And hello to you all. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity uh, to join you today. Um, and want to thank everyone attending uh, and everyone who I know is contributing to organizing uh, the symposium. Um, so thanks for all of your uh, you know, hard work. Um, and I hope uh, this finds you all well. Uh, and uh, we can have a, a generative discussion uh, together today. Um, so I'm actually preparing to move apartments later this week. So the view behind me with this couch and hanging photo of a Brooklyn industrial area is like the only corner of my apartment without boxes everywhere, which is uh, really aggravating uh, our cat. Um, so let me get my screen uh, up just a moment. Okay, great. So you should be able to see my uh, slides now. Um, Perfect. So, uh, thank you. Uh, so as I'll continue to do as I present uh, slides and uh, uh, one short clip during my presentation, um, I'll try to do my best to verbally describe what appears on screen um, and can also make some special efforts uh, to do so out of accessibility consideration um, for those who are blind or with low vision. Um, and in case that would be helpful for anyone who's on the call or watching now, you can just direct message me or the organizers and I can make a you know, special um, effort uh, at a visual uh, 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 description uh, via voice. Um, and please also let me know if I can repeat anything uh, or rephrase anything in a clear way. Um, I'm happy to, to do so. Uh, so feel free to uh, uh, speak up uh, or uh, uh, ask a question um, afterwards for, for clarification. Um, but I really look forward to um, hearing all of your feedback. Um, I'd also like to note that this is uh, a work in progress uh, that I'm sharing today. Um, and I've talked through this in a writing workshop and made a shorter presentation at a conference. Um, but here uh, I'm looking forward to taking a bit more time um, talking about how this grows out of my larger critical project, um, how I'm approaching uh, the, to the topic uh, and relating this to uh, my central object, uh, La Distancia, um, which uh, the participants in this symposium had a chance to read a little bit about um, in advance through the exhibition catalog. Um, and I'll try to talk through how I'm trying to work out an argument, which is always the hardest part of a, a critical project like this. Um, so really invite your feedback and feel free to you know, raise your hand or unmute yourself and speak up, um, or just to submit a comment uh, to uh, discuss uh, afterwards. Um, so before I get started, uh, I'll uh, just note uh, the context of the project uh, and uh, uh, how I became uh, uh, interested uh, in it. Um, my dissertation uh, is about personal documentary projects or autobiographical films or, or what I prefer to call self-documentary uh, projects uh, produced in community media spaces, uh, which could also be categorized uh, 
within the genre of the essay film. Uh, and I have been looking at different ways of thinking about personal documentary or self-documentary in uh, uh, theoretical uh, foundations that uh, get away from uh, that of the, the essay film um, and think of kind of spatial uh, alternatives, thinking of uh, self-documentary or personal documentary as a mode of exploring space. Uh, so this is kind of where the essay film connects to expanded cinema uh, for me. Uh, and hopefully these two kind of areas of you know, film research, the, the essay film uh, and expanded cinema uh, can be in you know, productive uh, relation uh, here in my presentation. Um, so hopefully this is meaningful for a lot of you who may have maybe more of a uh, familiarity uh, with uh, expanded uh, expanded cinema in an urban space. Um, and to expand a little bit on you know my uh, coming to this project, uh, a lot of the community media spaces where I'm interested in looking at personal documentary uh, or self-documentary uh, projects uh, are uh, in urban spaces um, uh, in in the city. Uh, so I think my larger critical interests are very much. Uh, uh, related uh, to the, the stakes of uh, considering the possibilities of expanded cinema um, in the city and kind of questioning um, the, what public uh, it, these projects uh, orient themselves uh, to. Uh, so that's really where I uh, uh, come into uh, this, uh, this project that I'm describing here, although it's at a very early stage, um, I come to look at uh, installation film and expanded cinema um, through looking for spatial al alternatives to the essay film as a theoretical grounding for personal documentary or autobiographical film um, or the self-documentary. Uh, that's kind of what I uh, uh, began this project looking to uh, get, get out of it and why I was drawn to um, uh, the work uh, that I'll be uh, analyzing. Uh, so my talk today, uh, tracking the census uh, between script translation and post-produced documentary sound, uh, ad addresses recent work in moving image art installations, which foreground research-intensive processes, drawing on archives, journalistic investigation, and data interpretation. Rooted in an analysis of a 2017 work by Camel Collective, I situate these art projects mostly exhibited in the form of gallery or site-specific installation as owing to traditions of the essay film while engaging in the immersive qualities associated with expanded cinema. I suggest that in their focus on process and activation of a document through one or another mode of performance, these works open up the possibility to ask, as was done of expanded cinema, what forms of sociality or research-based moving image art currently embedded within, uh, or be, could be facilitated by projects that suspend the translation of theory and practice. In this talk, derived from a work in progress, uh, I'll emphasize spatial place-based alternatives to conceptualizations of the public sphere in considering cinematic practice between the essay film and expanded cinema. Uh, and the current slide here displays uh, my title. Uh, tracking the census between script translation and post-produced uh, documentary sound uh, and presents a still image from the central work I'll be analyzing, uh, featuring a man speaking into a microphone in a dark studio in front of a screen uh, where his image is projected uh, standing with a walking stick on the bank of a river. And this next slide uh, shows portraits of the artists Anthony Graves and Carla Herrera Pratt's. Collaborating under the name Camel Collective since 2010, uh, Anthony Graves and Carla Herrera Pratt's two channel, 27 minute video installation, La uh, de Anki Zermatt, Es la misma que la de Zermatt et a part. Tercina Pontresina to Zermatt is the same as Zermatt by Nyo um, or Muak uh, and exhibited in uh, 2017. 
La Distancia presents a stunning set of juxtapositions. Uh, two men take turns seated in a re recording studio, tracking lines of braille, pronouncing into a microphone letter correspondence between Theodore Adorno, uh, or Teddy, as he's uh, referred to uh, in the personal letter correspondence, and Herbert Marcuse, in which they discuss the political potentials of the 1968 student movement. The same two actors from the recording studio, Marco Martinez Suarez and Jesus Rodriguez Fernandez from Teatro Ciego, appear on a silent video projection within the same booth at Estudios Churubusco, in which the two men navigate Mexico City. Alongside these projected images of Juarez and Fernandez, who are blind, a team of Foley artists use props to create audio matching the scrape of their walking sticks, footsteps on gravel or, or nearby animals, uh, creating a complex soundtrack with six audio channels. Um, so the slide that I just uh, displayed, which I'll uh, return to, uh, shows this two channel installation uh, with the studio view on the left uh, and a city, of view, a city view uh, on the right. Um, and this two-channel work alternates between uh, the movement uh, of the two men. Tragically, just as the two German philosophers who at one point debate travel to or from their respective locations in Pontresina and Zermatt, Switzerland, do not intersect due to Adorno's death, neither do the two walking actors. Um, and this slide uh, here features uh, portraits of Adorno and Marcuse. At the time of their correspondence, Adorno had returned to the Institute for Social Research at Goethe University in Frankfurt after finding refuge in California during World War II, while Marcuse was teaching at UC San Diego. In their debates around holiday travel, it's unclear what effort they're actually putting into really seeing each other. Uh, one of so many inscrutable details of personal relationships, uh, aside from Adorno, uh, again, signing and being addressed as Teddy, and uh, Marcusa uh, often signing with his full name and official you know, professorial title. Uh, the distance from uh, Pontresina to Zermatt is the same as from Zermatt to Pontresina. Comes to stand in not only for the practical uh, details, uh, but the gaps between the two theorists' work uh, and that of student activist politics and practice. Um, and this slide here demonstrates the map distance between uh, the towns and, and Switzerland uh, at over 300 kilometers uh, by car. Uh, and here is a photo from a student protest in a Frankfurt classroom. Um, where German, German uh, student movement, student activists, uh, frustrated by Adorno's politics and lack of support, um, organized the Plan Tenderness Action or Busen Action or Breast Action in Adorno's aesthetics class in the Institute for Social Research at Goethe University uh, uh, on April 22nd, 1969. Uh, and this slide shows that action in which a group of students uh, remove, remove their skirts on the right and sh sh uh, their shirts on the right and shower Adorno with flower petals uh, on the left. Marcusa, meanwhile, had a much more productive relationship with the new left uh, from his post at UCSD, advising uh, Angela Davis on her dissertation and agitating for the creation of the Lumumba Zapata College uh, including occupying the registrar's office. Um, and here this slide features a UCSD student anti-war demonstration. Uh, and here uh, a photo of uh, Davis and Marcusa uh, speaking together um, over a stack of uh, books uh, around uh, 1968. Aside from the quotidian details share, shared in epistolary exchanges on health, uh, the weather and travel. Uh, Adorno and Marcuse's correspondence uh, is well known for their back and forth on their experience of the work of student radicals and reassessment of their own theories. 
Marcuse writes, you know me well enough to know that I reject the unmediated translation of theory into practice just as emphatically as you do. Uh, but I do believe there are situations, moments, in which theory is pushed on further by praxis, situations and moments in which theory that is kept separate from practice becomes untrue to itself. We cannot abolish from the world the fact that these students are influenced by us, and certainly not least by you. I am proud of that and am willing to come to terms with patricide, even though it hurts sometimes. And the means that they use in order to translate theory into activity, we know and they know that the situation is not a revolutionary one, not even a pre-revolutionary one. Adorno responds later uh, to Marcusa writing, I disagree with you on the question of when the police should be called. Recently in a faculty discussion, uh, Mr. Cohn Bendit told me that I only had the right to call the police if blows were about to rain down on me. I replied that by then it would be probably be too late. In the case of the occupation of the Institute, no other course of action was possible. These unresolved debates concerning the relationship between theory and practice flow into the unsatisfied discussion of the possibility for their travel plans to intersect. The disjunction between the ease of their correspondence and bourgeois life and frustrated disagreements uh, clashes with the smooth artifice of post-production sound. So too does the movement of Juarez uh, and Fernandez, the two actors uh, in La Distancia, across the stratifications of class in Mexico City, including through uh, the garbage dump uh, Bordo de Xochiaca. Uh, and this slide displays uh, Fernandez uh, uh, standing in for Adorno, uh, traversing this area uh, with the Swiss Alps transposed to the Bordo de Xochiaca's uh, trash Alps. La Distancia extends the dialogic relation between Frankfurt and San Diego and the two academics vac vacation spots in Switzerland, tracing links between the transnational new left of the time and invites juxtaposition with the student, the Mexican student movement of the time and the Tlatelolco massacre just prior to the opening of the 1968 Summer Olympics in Mexi Mexico City. Uh, however, this isn't uh, addressed uh, directly uh, and the topic isn't brought up in the, in the piece and these kind of juxtapositions between uh, uh, Mexico and the status of the student movement uh, there and that of Germany uh, and uh, California are just left to kind of stand alongside each other uh, and not analyzed in full. La Distancia scrambles uh, theory and practice, putting pressure on the ethical and political limits of the Frankfurt School, while contributing a valuable translation of Adorno and Marcuse's letters as an appropriated screenplay. As Camel Collective, uh, Grave and Herrera Pratz's project involved translation of the German original to Spanish by Jaime Soler Frost, which had been translated to English by Esther Leslie uh, for a publication in the New Left Review uh, in 1999. Uh, and to give you a better sense of the aesthetics of the piece and the experience of watching it, although I'll emphasize that this is a two channel work um, which it doesn't do it justice to uh, watch uh, online. Uh, I'll show uh, a brief clip just as a demonstration of the execution of the film um, after uh, the participants in the symposium uh, were able to see the translation uh, that uh, the piece grows out of uh, from the exhibition's uh, catalog. Um, so this is a short clip from the beginning uh, of the film. Um, hopefully the sound comes through okay for you, uh, but even if it doesn't, there will be uh, subtitles um, on, on screen.
Okay, thank you. Um, so now the slide I'm displaying on screen uh, is that of a microphone uh, from the film. Uh, so the industrial practice of post-production sound recording, whether Foley or Artistas de Gaviras, has a particular resonance given that the practice is not only digitally produced uh, or replaced, uh, or not easily digitally produced or replaced. Uh, the sound artists in the booth use a range of strange objects and material uh, or junk that would otherwise not be worthy of keeping. However, this invisible process only functions through an accumulation of such material to be experienced unknowingly by viewers and listeners. While this work contains uh, essayistic components uh, in La Distancia, it also comports to trends in the exhibition of moving image art identified by Erica Balsam, noting that the gallery-based moving image production of the last two decades is a site at which interrogations into cinematic specificity have taken place that both reflect on the material components of the apparatus and extend beyond them. These works exhibit cinema, not simply as celluloid, projector, or binary code, but also as a social and historical institution. They offer numerous answers to the question of what cinema might be, and in doing so, may be understood as engaging in film theory through practice. Graves and Herrera Pratz's La Distancia engages theory and practice in means of juxtaposing space and history, uh, while flattening the philosophical inquiry of the two philosophers' epistolary exchange. In another experimental work concerned with post-production sound, for Stratman's Hacked Circuit of 2014, uh, a camera moves through a Foley stage in Burbank, California, as a sound engineer and Foley artist uh, creates sound or recreate sound uh, for the final scene of the conversation uh, by Francis Ford Coppola uh, from 1974. Uh, in which a sonic surveillance expert is tearing apart his apartment uh, looking for a recording device he suspects may have been planted somewhere uh, based on the calls he's uh, receiving, uh, including the audio uh, of his own home. Um, so Hack Circuit is a single channel, 15 minute work, uh, and it toys with the simulated sounds and images um, from the sound studio office space, seemingly incidentally coming into view of the camera as it slowly pans around the space, including a buzzing microphone over the image of a coffee maker. Uh, so the, the camera in the film kind of moves outside of the actual Foley uh, studio into the uh, kind of office space of the uh, production office with the, uh, a coffee maker and, and whatnot. Um, on this uh, fashion of uh, doubling, uh, uh, in which the, the film, the conversation, is so concerned with uh, sound uh, and uh, recreation uh, and the, the film displaying that film, Hack Circuit, uh, uh, doubles that, uh, uh, that uh, technology and phenomenon. Um, on the, fas the fashion of doubling, uh, such as the slight physical resemblances between Gene Hackman's character of Harry Call uh, in the conversation, um, and Foley artist uh, Greg Barbonell uh, and his sound technician in the booth, Darren Mann, uh, Stratman notes that I was interested in the poetics of simple objects having double identities, a latent sonic one uh, and one obvious utilitarian one. Foley artists have things in their studio because of what they sound like when manipulated. Both Graves and Herrera Pratz's La Distancia and Stratman's Hack Circuit emphasize the spatial sonic elements of films that usually go unnoticed. Uh, in one, considering the limitations of Frankfurt School philosophy in comparison to the navigation of a city by two blind men, and in another, toying with the implications of surveillance technology and its representation in cinema. In each case, the projects imbue the processes of production uh, with newly visible materiality. Uh, and newly uh, sensate, um, thinking about the uh, oral or audio dimensions of the, of the films. The actors Jesus Fernandez uh, uh, as Adorno uh, and uh, Marco Martinez Suarez as Marcusa, uh, appearing in this slide, interviewed for their work with Teatro Ciego, 
uh, are presented in the film La Distancia, uh, tracking Braille, um, yet rely on memorization of the theorist's correspondence um, in order to uh, speak um, their, their lines of dialogue. As Herrera, Prats, and Graves describes, the Foley or Gaviras's tools were made available in the exhibition sites in Mexico City uh, and Queens, New York, um, and elsewhere, uh, where events of 1968 uh, were uh, discussed in programmed uh, public discussions. By making legacies of industrial film production newly visible through contemporary experimental film practice, uh, named after uh, Jack Foley, uh, 1891 to 1967 uh, uh, in the US, or Artistas de Gaviras after Gonzalo Gavira, 1925 to 2005 in Mexico, uh, the project's schematic aesthetics make urgent political debates newly sensate uh, in both the, the experience of the film um, and in the exhibition space, uh, including these uh, uh, props that were uh, uh, these uh, Foley or Gaviras tools that were made available in the exhibition space. Uh, and in this slide uh, uh, on screen now, uh, Foley uh, uh, and Gavira appear on the left uh, and right. An additional reference bridging the essay film and expanded cinema through a research intensive engagement with sound. Um, I'd like to juxtapose uh, this work, La Distancia, with Hitosh Daryl's 2019 installation at the Park Avenue Armory, uh, Drill, uh, produced in collaboration with the Yale Precision Marching Band, uh, or YPMB, uh, and university composers uh, during Hito Sterl's Hayden Distinguished Fellowship uh, at the Yale School of Art uh, from 2018 to 2019. Uh, Drill is a 21-minute essay film uh, on the connection between the New York Armory uh, and the development of the National Rifle Association, uh, or NRA, in the U.S. Uh, and it relies on the Precision Marching Band's performance of compositions uh, such as Mass Shootings 1999 to 2018, uh, which translates uh, Mother Jones, the um, progressive uh, uh, US uh, uh, magazine, uh, which translates uh, Mother Jones uh, database uh, with temporal markers and data points sonified uh, by different instruments uh, sounds. Uh, so translating uh, the, a database of the uh, temporal incidents of mass shootings um, into uh, sound or the sonification of this data. Uh, so a, a data audioization uh, rather than visualization, uh, Drill uh, recording the video, uh, or Drill presents uh, the a recorded video of the marching band's performance um, in the vast uh, armory space, uh, which is then exhibited uh, in that same space uh, on three massive screens, uh, as you can see uh, on uh, the, the still I'm displaying here. Uh, Drill was uh, uh, largely panned uh, uh, by critics uh, such as uh, Rahel Aima, uh, as bland and slick with an uncharacteristic earnestness that wouldn't be out of place in a public service announcement. The disconnection between these blockbuster works of immersive moving image art and those which are situated within a program of continuing dialectic engagement shows another way of thinking through the context of moving image art uh, after expanded cinema or after the popularity of expanded cinema. Um, which is always in tension with these authorized sites uh, of the public sphere. Um, and I'd be happy to uh, discuss uh, Drill um, in particular uh, with uh, you all if you have um, some questions about the work um, or would like to uh, can discuss these uh, critiques which I'm uh, relaying uh, further. Um, and these ideas of the blockbuster uh, expanded cinema um, installation. The idea of a public sphere, um, which the essay uh, and essay film stands in relation to, um, was uh, formulated uh, by Jurgen Habermas to discuss or to describe common spaces in which to address issues in public debate 
um, is continually debated uh, and generatively reimagined itself. Uh, accounting for the compounding effects of neoliberalism as an economic and cultural regime, limiting the potential of physical and discursive public spaces, uh, as well as a general skepticism towards the Habermasian public sphere as a means of reinforcing normative public opinion uh, or majoritarian dominance over racialized, ethnic, sexual, or religious minorities. Uh, scholars such as Michael Warner have questioned the utility of public spheres uh, as a normative phenomenon, proposing queer and feminist expansions as counterpublics. While John Keane proposed a useful way of reconsidering this theoretical object's spatial dimensions as multiple overlapping and interconnected public spheres. In emphasizing the spatial dimensions of the public sphere, uh, Keene's model of fragmented public spheres operating at three registers uh, or levels, uh, including the micro, meso, and macro public spheres. Um, I'll just uh, repeat that for, for clarity. The, uh, Keene's model of fragmented public spheres operating at three registers uh, or levels, including the micro, meso, and macro public spheres, and representing uh, subnational, national, and regional areas is a useful alternative uh, and I hope generative for thinking through the materialist possibilities of documentary media. Introducing a variation on Habermas's use of the term, Keen proposes that under a process of re-feudalization, we can identify the development of a complex mosaic of differently sized, uh, overlapping and interconnected public spheres uh, that force us to radically uh, revise our understanding of public life and its partner terms, such as public good um, and the public-private distinction. Uh, writing in the mid-1990s, he emphasized a public sphere as a particular kind of spatial relationship, most often utilizing various means of communication, noting in particular television, radio, satellite, uh, the, the fax, um, and the telephone. Uh, the work of Catherine McKittrick um, in Black Feminist Geography uh, is very significant in pushing this work forward, um, as is uh, Tim Cresswell's model of uh, placemaking as a practice extending from authorized modes of professional cultural discourse to quotidian behaviors or everyday behaviors. Likewise, uh, offers uh, refreshingly tangible potential amidst neoliberal regimes in which the significance of place has increased under the conditions of flexible accumulation, uh, post-modernity uh, and time-space compression. Under this model of Cresswell's uh, placemaking is not necessarily oriented towards the normative consensus of the public sphere, um, but instead often inscribing sites of contestation, uh, such as interrupting processes of urban gentrification in which contrasting claims are juxtaposed uh, but not always resolved. We can think alongside these ideas to revise and expand past conceptualizations of personal documentary filmmaking um, or self-documentary attached to the essay film uh, and a reliance on engagement and debate within the public sphere uh, in the sense of the published literary essay. Uh, as Tiffany Corrigan writes, uh, the history of the essay demonstrates, in fact, that the essayistic is most interesting not so much in how it privileges personal expression uh, and subjectivity, but rather how it troubles and complicates that very notion of expressivity in its relation to experience, uh, the second cornerstone of the essayistic. He continues, uh, Corrigan, to understand how essayistic expressivity describes a subjection of an instrumental or expressive self to a public domain as a form of experience that continually tests and undoes uh, or undoes uh, the limits and capacities of that self through that experience. Uh, this is very valuable, uh, but I'd like to suggest that the alternate formulation of documentary elaborate, elaborated on here allows a more outward expressivity uh, and curiosity one that's oriented spatially to a personal exploration of surroundings, history, material, and sociality, 
uh, and is justified in, in its iteration as a balance of theory and practice. Instead, we can consider a filmmaking form that explores place and reflexively engages with the history and present uh, of its own materiality. Both uh, Herrera Pratz's uh, La Distancia uh, and uh, uh, both uh, Graves and Herrera Pratz's La Distancia and Sterl's uh, Drill spatialize and politicize sonic elements of space that usually go unnoticed. In one, considering the limitations of Frankfurt School philosophy in comparison to the navigation uh, of a city uh, by two uh, blind actors, and in another, aestheticizing data, which people have become desensitized to. Moving outside the essay film frame and wavering close to that of the expanded cinema, uh, and the blockbuster show amidst the documentary turn and contemporary art requires a focus uh, on the discourse of the community uh, that the work of Anthony Graves and Carla Herrera Pratt's as Camel Collective uh, circulated uh, within um, during the time of their active uh, production. Uh, and continuing uh, a dialectic, uh, not one depending on the public sphere. Uh, but often, you know, small community uh, art, art spaces uh, and uh, political groups that they were in touch with. Um, these works stress the question, uh, what is the critical culture of experimental moving image art necessary to keep these alive uh, and accessible? Um, and that's a question that I would uh, kind of pose for, you know, uh, community media spaces uh, where personal documentary is produced um, as well as, you know, cultural spaces uh, supporting uh, expanded uh, cinema, uh, including the uh, examples that I've touched on uh, during, this, uh, during this presentation. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for your attention uh, and uh, patience. Um, and I'll just uh, leave my email uh, here up on screen, and I'm sure the organizers would be happy to uh, uh, pass that along to any participants in case you want to um, uh, discuss and ask any further uh, questions uh, privately. Uh, but thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Joe. It was a really interesting um, conference about many things we can discuss. So um, I have some, uh, not actually questions, but some um, highlights that I think that would be really interested that interesting that we could uh, talk more about. And uh, while uh, we discuss, um, I, I can uh, invite the aud audience to think about um, questions you want to make. So um, uh, feel free to send any questions. Okay, I'll just translate that to um, Portuguese in a little bit. So, um, eu vou conversar um pouco com o professor Joel e vocês fiquem à vontade também enquanto a gente vai conversando e desdobrando algumas questões né, que ele trouxe também para fazerem é, perguntas e podem mandar perguntas via chat no YouTube e a gente vai receber essas perguntas aqui, tá bom? É, so, lots of things we can discuss about. So, uh, you talked about the forms of sociability. And also one thing that I found that's really interesting is about the mater materiality of um, historical processes and theoretical processes. And then, and then you think about how practice and theory, di uh, uh, they, they, they dialogue, you know, in this, all these um, expanded cinema processes. So um, could, you, could you tell more about how you see um, uh, how this... Uh, processes, they, they, they uh, expose like a certain uh, cinematic language um, process itself, but also dialoguing with other languages and other materialities. So uh, how do you see, like, if you, if you were to uh, analyze, you know, uh, all these um, material dialogues between languages, so um, in an aesthetical way, uh, how how would you um, how would you analyze them? You know, in in, in the in this the case of um, this film. Yeah, good good question. It's one that I'm uh, grappling with in this <laughs> in this in this project. Uh, I think 
I admit why I am, or the reason why I'm drawn uh, to uh, this uh, this film, La Distancia, and in particular, um, is because of how it uh, engages in uh, artifice very openly um, and playfully uh, in order to make juxtapositions that aren't uh, resolved um, in the in the piece itself uh, uh, and it uh, uh, I think it roots roots that in this kind of disagreement and uh, frustration uh, between uh, Adorno uh, and uh, Mar Marcusa um, I think Ad Adorno um, who uh, I think as much as any other you know philosopher uh, kind of shows the creative potential of um, kind of uh, negativity and uh, skepticism um, and a kind of also a depressive uh, frame uh, frame of mind um, in a way that uh, I think has recently been uh, reassessed in really generative ways. There's a book called uh, Jazz as Critique by uh, Fumi Okiji. Um, uh, all about uh, 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 taking the uh, generative uh, elements of Adorno's uh, kind of space of negativity um, as a, a generative critical uh, praxis, uh, while uh, uh, kind of moving uh, maybe through through and beyond um, the really problematic uh, aspects of his critique, just not getting jazz and really showing his own um, uh, uh, kind of, uh, you know, bigotry and, sh and short-sighted um, uh, perspective uh, on it. So this kind of the cre creative possibility of uh, Adorno with all of his flaws. And I think um, Marcusa, who seems to be much more comfortable uh, with uh, the that uh, Kind of unresolvable mediation between you know theory and practice, and um, giving or just allowing more space for um, activists to uh, figure out their own methodology and kind of follow their uh, political uh, cause, um, and then the juxtaposition of um, the different kind of spatial uh, contexts that uh, the uh, the film stages uh, uh, against kind of. Uh, the production in, in Mexico City. Um, so the way that the film allow the allows those juxtapositions kind of not not to be uh, resolved is really helpful uh, for uh, for me, um, and I think it's productive, uh, or it's been uh, helpful for me in thinking about the work in the larger. Uh, context uh, of uh, expanded cinema utilizing essay film uh, components um, amidst this documentary turn in contemporary art, uh, which you know I think by its uh, uh, nature and the popularity of uh, um, expanded cinema projects like uh, Drill at the large um, Park Avenue uh, Armory uh, and others we could mention um, uh, in different um, art, art institutions. Um, you know, often uh, are a, to take on the function of uh, maybe simplifying and, and clarifying ideas. Um, and that's very much where the critic Rahel Aima comes from and kind of dismissing uh, the, the work as kind of a public service uh, announcement. Um, so I'm interested in just this, the simplicity of juxtaposing kind of irresolvable contradictions, um, as well as kind of an, an essay film uh, that is actually quite clear and executing its uh, kind of aesthetic goals of audioizing. Um, this gun violence um, uh, data uh, and how there's almost a critical 
appetite uh, for um, uh, just you know dis discourse for the sake of uh, discourse or you know uh, in irresolvability in the essay film uh, form um, for almost an entertainment uh, uh, entertainment's uh, uh, sake. Uh, so thinking about the potential of this form and like uh, larger you know uh, art uh, and culture of public uh, settings is think an interesting arena to try out and uh, think through in this in this project but ultimately I'm you know most interested in the potential of this kind of practice um, kind of these uh, irresolvable juxtapositions that are kind of rooted in social commitments or spaces that are rooted in uh, 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 social commitments um, and how uh, uh, wanting to clear a resolution, whether or not that's uh, the, the essay film um, and the personal documentary kind of simplifying personal experience uh, for the sake of, you know, public uh, public consumption um, or a, a piece of expanded cinema that is uh, 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 just immersive for the sake of uh, uh, immersion and uh, uh, kind of disentangling oneself from the social uh, from the social world um, and uh, for me these these works are really useful in thinking through that uh, that tension and maybe giving um, our, hopefully, and this may be the, is the question for, for other participants too, um, kind of giving artists that uh, license to explore those um, both political and aesthetic uh, uh, questions and not be pulled into um, you know, the, the essay film as a, uh, a publicly consumable essay making a, 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 clear, a clear argument. Uh, but as a writer, I'm also attracted to these questions because, as I mentioned, making a, a, a clear uh, argument in an academic essay is always such a challenge for me. Uh, so this pursuit is always a meta, <laughs> uh, a meta one. Yeah, but it, it's really great, Joel, that you're, you're talking about this um, this um, thinking, the, this this form of. Um, uh, comp uh, understanding aesthetics not um, separated from politics. That's one thing that mm -hmm. I, I, I always try to, to have in mind when I'm thinking about aesthetics, you know, as, a, as an area of mm -hmm. study. And the way you, um, let's say, expand the understanding about expanded cinema, you know, uh, bringing this um, critical position and this critical possibilities of um, engaging also in expanded cinema because the first studies in expanded cinema they're going to be um, drawn to the language you know so mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. it's not that it's only just technical but the whole aesthetic um, um, uh, um, the aesthetic um, thinking we develop on that. It's going to be related to technical issues, you know? So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we see like in the, the La Distancia Ante Portesina e, I can't, um, I can't memorize the name, and Zermatt. Oh, so Zermatt, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just <laughs> taking a look again. So uh, it's really just interesting because all this technical part that um, um, explores the cinematic la um, language it also carries like a, a just a position, as you say, of spaces and of time. Mm -hmm. It's also like mm -hmm. not only in, in, in a space just position, but also of time, because this discussion that they they they, they have about the, the 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 student movement in the '60s, it, it's it's really like our times now that we're mm -hmm. watching the, like the rise of the 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 right. Um, parties mm -hmm. in the whole world, like let's say Trump in the US uh, before Biden and here in Brazil, mm -hmm. let's hope it's gonna finish now, now in October. <laughs> but um, so uh, it's also like just a, pos a, a, just a position of uh, history of time and space, you know, because 
when the two mm -hmm. uh, blind actors they they walk through the city it's like that they were bringing all that situation and all that discussion to nowadays you know to like thinking uh, while they walk around the city and walking is also something that's really um always present mm -hmm. in studies but that's not not something that we're going to talk about especially but so it's it's really interesting to uh this um thing of expanding the the comprehension and the studies that have mm -hmm. already been made traditionally in the expanded film um mm -hmm. field, you know so that's that's really interesting so in, in in this context i i would really like to listen more to your uh debate about public space that you began to discuss with habermas and then you bring mm -hmm. other concepts you know like thinking about this like for example i really like the 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 idea of therotopy, uh, Foucault's idea mm -hmm. of therotopy, you know, like mm -hmm. that you think about how space is uh, built with all these just uh, positions, not only spatial mm -hmm. positions, but political, aesthetical, and also timing, you know, because we're talking about histories, like reframing mm -hmm. history, mm -hmm. watching history, rethinking history in our context, you know, like that that movement from the, the, the stu students then how how do we mm -hmm. see it now you know that that in bait mm -hmm. like like so um i'd like you to talk more about this idea of public space in relating mm -hmm. relating to this uh, um context of expanded expanded cinema in a critical view because yeah, i think it's mm -hmm. really an interesting point you have there that would be really mm -hmm. interesting that you could um, talk more about it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, th thank you. Yeah, and that's uh, that's kind of the the part of this project that is closest to um, my other work in community media and personal um, documentary uh, that I'm uh, uh, happy to talk about uh, more. Um, but I ap appreciate how you're uh, uh, framing uh, the importance of um, discussing aesthetics uh, and politics uh, together when uh, assessing assessing work like this, um, and for me, I'm uh, really interested in the this uh, to what degree the circulation of works um, and the exhibition of uh, works like this uh, facilitate uh, uh, engaging. You know both of those uh, both of those dimensions, um, and I th that's part of what I'm interested uh, in uh, with these uh, uh, big uh, blockbuster expanded uh, expanded cinema works that are metafilmic uh, in in a way. Like I I see like I would. Um, compare something like, uh, and you know, maybe in the uh, a later version of this this project, I'd like to compare La Distancia with something like Tacita Dean's uh, uh, kind of metafilmic. Um, uh, ex uh, I think you can call them ex expanded cinema uh, uh, sculptures. Um, in how uh, the the past is or how, how film is positioned in the past, the past and you know, photo, either photochemical film in the, the case of uh, uh, Dean, um, and then um, the uh, non-digital, um, you know, Foley uh, or Gaviras, uh, and how that's used to move somewhere else. You know, it, it instead it, uh, lets us think about the, uh, the contradictions that cinema um, relies on. Um, like having a you know, still image, you know, 24 frames a second, and the um, the lie that we're all, um, and the kind of misperception that cinema depends on. Um, so I think like that uh, that ju that uh, juxtaposition um, or that contradiction, um, just like uh, the contradiction of uh, uh, Foley sound, um, which I think uh, I would just expand on um, in um uh, uh relaying uh what i've heard uh regarding you know fully uh artists or gaviras uh in that 
because people are so audiences are so uh, used to certain sound effects for certain visual phenomena on screen. Um, if you record that activity um, in uh, in the field, uh, like running through uh, through grass, it won't sound like running through grass, but we're we would accept, you know, more easily, you know, two fabrics, you know, rubbed rubbed together. Um, so uh, just seeing that lie for uh, 25 minutes um, in uh, La Distancia um, brings up that kind of critical thinking that allows one to, you know, juxtapose what it means to navigate the physical space of the city, you know, whatever Mexico City means in these areas in Mexico City. Um, whether Bordeaux de Xochiaca or, or other areas, or if the reference of the 68 uh, uh, massacre um, prior to the Olympics is, you know, significant, it kind of op opens up that, that space of, of thinking. Um, and that's uh, kind of what, where I'm interested in the possibilities of shifting the terms of, of the Habermasian uh, public sphere um, which in some ways is a, is a kind of a caricatured version of the public sphere, um, which uh, I, I don't want to uh, uh, participate in uh, uh, too much, but um, that it's uh, a, a, a normalizing uh, a space uh, that uh, 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 kind of ex excludes um, as much as it uh, or more so than it uh, in includes, uh, and that uh, these additional thinkers um, like uh, uh, Timothy uh, Cresswell, uh, Michael Warner, and you, uh, with uh, the idea of counterpublics or placemaking, um, turning space into a you know a personalized uh, uh, space uh, or a, a space into a personalized place. Um, as well as Foucault's kind of heterotopia, which I think is is very much you know in dialogue with this um, with this uh, this discourse, I think provides a generative uh, uh, framework for thinking about the value of uh, 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 navigating space you know through media you know relaying uh, relaying that, um, and these for me uh, open up uh, like alternatives for um the uh I, and i don't think that some of the most interesting authors writing about the essay film do this uh um like uh, timothy uh corrigan um who i mentioned um whose uh, work on the essay film i think is really uh generative and uh and uh interesting uh but that maybe popular um uh, or people have kind of taken up the possibilities that the essay film has become a trend in the, the art market with the documentary uh, turn um, in this uh, moment. Um, the conceptualizations of the, the essay film as synonymous with the personal documentary, kind of personal doc, uh, personal perspective, um, and a you know sing a singular production in, in some ways. Um, limits the aesthetic possibilities that I see with just the value of navigating the space of a city, um, whether or not that's a kind of a doc documentary approach um, or has experimental attributes. Um, but as I think about kind of the experimental personal documentary, which I discuss as the self-documentary, rather than associating that with the essay film, um, uh, in the kind of the essay accessing um, the public of the public sphere, um, an essay you know publicly uh, uh, published, relating relaying a personal perspective for um, in, a, in a literary uh, sphere. Um, kind of moving away from that, I see a lot of possibility in thinking about um, alternatives to the Habermasian public sphere through these uh, spatial. Uh, frames, you know, whether or not that's, you know, uh, Foucault or uh, Michael Warner or Timothy uh, Cresswell um, or uh, Catherine McKittrick um, and the kind of personal um, uh, you know, valences of how people move through uh, through space and the, the value of um, recording that, putting that into a work. And then in the, I think the real, the onus is really on how that work circulates. Um, and the responsibilities of you know cultural institutions in um, framing that 
uh, and uh, opening up conversations. Um, and this isn't something that I got into too much uh, about uh, the work of uh, Camel Collective and Graves and Herrera Pratt's, but they would often have uh, very in-depth uh, discussions and public uh, public programs and uh, 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 debate-like dis discussions. Um, and I saw their work as very much involved in this uh, 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 discursive uh, uh, process um, where uh, uh, I think that they were uh, participating in the, the kind of uh, process that um, you know necessary for artists working through um, art institutions uh, that I'm uh, addressing in the in the talk. Um, so that's uh, uh, my where I'm coming from where I, when I talk about, the public sphere and spatial theoretical alternatives uh, to it. Um, and that's where I, what I apply elsewhere in looking at um, like youth media projects, um, say producing uh, personal documentaries or self documentaries as part of a summer program um, that is really valuable for kind of experimental projects um, to explore space, explore uh, the makers, you know, relation to those uh, spaces. Um, I think the uh, slotting everything into the essay film uh, category is kind of limiting of those that exactly that political potential um, that I think is really solidified in something like La Distancia. Great. That's that's really interesting. I um when I investigate the I investigate this space is something that I always investigate in my researches, and I, I have this concept of imaginary topology, mm -hmm. uh, which 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 I, I relate very much to this personal creation of space. You know, uh, mm -hmm. which is not only subjective in an inner way, but also mm -hmm. in a micro-political way, you know, in a form mm -hmm. of reacting to, uh, to the reality around you, to the politics around you in an aesthetic way. So this mm -hmm. is the way you can aesthetically react, you know, to this context that surrounds you, which I call this imaginary topology, which, which mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. is really interesting to, to dialogue with the, the perspective you're bringing from um, Habermas about public sphere because that's how public sphere can be um, also created. No, it's it's not mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like uh, an unique view of a public sphere, sphere as though it, it was like given to us like an external mm -hmm. public sphere. Now, when sometimes I remember first when I read Habermas, I don't know, I had twenty like I was the communication um, faculty. And reading mm -hmm. Habermas, and it was sounded something that was given to me, you no, know? something that I was I, I, I didn't participate into. I had to find my way to participate into. So thinking right. about these small possibilities of creating uh, space, you know, and the micro politics of this in all of these public spheres, I think it's a really great contribution. Um, uh, this conversation we're having and the, the perspective you bring uh is it, it, it's a, a great perspective and a great contribution we can think about how expanded uh, cinema can also um participate in that right it's it's really interesting so joe um we have a question that has arrived has arrived here i'll try to um translate i'll read it first in portuguese so people can understand us the question and then i'll try to translate it okay so in portuguese first um, obrigada pela rica fala e por dividir sua pesquisa conosco, Professor Anderson. Uh, gostaria de saber como você analisa a construção das narrativas de si em La Distância. De um lado, temos essa dimensão social, histórica, institucional, fílmica da Escola de Frankfurt. E de outro, temos uma dimensão táctil e audiovisual que parece também marcar uma narrativa sensorial e pessoal. Você acredita que isso, no limite, nos convoca a sair de um estado de emotional desensitization? Fabs, I didn't understand that. Emotional... De, é, uma, uma desensibilização falta emocional. Falta de sensibilidade... É, falta de sensibilidade emocional. Emocional, tá, ok. 
é, uma das potências do cinema expandido seria nos convocar a sair do estado de, indifer de indiferença que parece dominar a nossa sociedade contemporânea? Ai, muito bom, Fábio. I'll now translate that, ok? So, thank you for your great speech and for sharing your research with us, Professor Anderson. Uh, I'd like to know how you analyze the constructions of narratives uh, of yourself, no, the, your, mm -hmm. the self narratives, and mm -hmm. in the film La Distancia. Uh, from one side, this social, historical, and institutional filmic dimension we have uh, when we relate to the Frankfurt Schools, College Frankfurt. And on the other side, it seems we also have a tactile and audiovisual dimension, which seems to um, mark a sensorial and personal narrative. So do you believe that this dialectic, it kind of um, promotes a way of getting out of a dense, dense ah, 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 uh, not sensitive emotional state that we are so used to be in our contemporary society. I mean, uh, would one of the, the possibilities of expanded cinema be to convoke, to provoke us to get out of this state of numbness, you know, numbness, mm -hmm. num num numbness, right? Like, like we are, uh, that seems to um, dominate in our contemporary society. If you want me to, to explain, like, I don't know if my translation was really good, so if something was not clear, just let me know, okay? Uh, uh, no, th th yeah, thank you so much. Okay. And, uh, and, and thank you to um, the, the person who offered the, the question. Professor Fabi uh, Fabiola Calazans. Oh, that. okay, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, and so it's a good... It's a good uh, question. I think one that uh, I know has been maybe uh, articulated in different ways uh, uh, concerning expanded cinema, like how, how much is it that I, I was maybe trying to gesture towards um, in, uh, in my own way in the, the talk, the sense that expanded cinema can be uh, 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 have qualities of being uh, immersed and uh, uh, letting go of the social uh, the social world, um, which has like an aesthetic uh, value. Um, but then there's also the potential of the of expanded cinema to uh, bring the artwork uh, out of the frame of the the painting, or even out of the the limitations of um, the cinema or even installation, uh, uh, moving image installations and have it be, you know, the space that people gather together and the, the ideas of the, the pieces can, um, can be, uh, 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 move freely with, with people in this discursive, uh, flow. Um, but I also, and I think that I can probably ask those questions, um, more productively in looking at La Distancia as you know, moving image installation, which isn't exactly expanded cinema, but I think it has these common qualities. Um, but I think that uh, if I understand the question uh, correctly, that there's also a potential in kind of getting a little bit uh, aesthetically lost in the, the piece itself um, and a social potential of, you know, at, uh, making things, uh, making reality strange, you know, uh, un, un, undoing how we understand, you know, cinema to work in this smooth way. Um, like the, the apparatus gets uh, deconstructed a, um, a bit. Um, and uh, uh, I think, uh, and maybe like undo some of the mythology behind the Frankfurt School, um, which I think is really behind some of the uh, uh, like undoing the mythology of Adorno and Marcusa a bit where they uh, are in letters uh, referring to, to Teddy and complaining as um, uh, 
elder uh, people uh, uh, might be ex expected uh, to, to do. Um, complaining about time spent away from teaching and like the research time or vacation time, rest time is becoming increasingly uh, familiar to me uh, Yeah, as are complaining about physical um, uh, issues. Um, so I think that just kind of defamiliarizes uh, the um, the reputation of the, the these Frankfurt uh, thinkers, um, and I think that little touches in the um, the film that I mentioned, um, like we're talking about the Swiss Alps, and a good portion of the film is traversing these trash uh, mountains, um, and I think that it. it uh, you know, pulls out a uh, humor, but a humor that you're not, uh, uh, it isn't a, a laugh out loud uh, humor because it's such a slow burn um, uh, viewing experience. Um, but I, I hope, or I, I believe that the, the film uh, does uh, uh, encourage a kind of reflective uh, experience um, that uh, takes both the, the the Frankfurt School and like our idea of how cinema, you know, smoothly works, um, and uh, you know, puts those uh, pieces out in front of um, the viewer to to deal with. And like I said, in the installation space, um, some of those Foley and Gabiras uh, props are available to play with. Um, so I think it's in in Camel Collective. There's a, a space of uh, play that's uh, in, encouraged, um, and I think that that's as good as any a way to describe um, like the reflective space that it encourages. It's kind of a, a space of play around theory. A lot of their other works are related to like artist manifestos and kind of artist discourses. Um, uh, you know, political, you know, uh, and artistic um, artist manifestos. Um, and uh, uh, that's, you know, often in, in their practice that had often been associated with um, you know, discussions with uh, 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 people coming to the space and short presentations from them, them as the artists. Um, so I think it's that space of play that opens up into um, the, the discourse. Um, and I'm always apprehensive to, you know, this is a five minute clip that they shared um, on online, um, but I'm always apprehensive to uh, uh, show um, these kind of installation works or expanded cinema works, which I know all of you um, grapple with all the time because it's such a different, you know, viewing experience. Um, but I think that this kind of discourse ourselves can hopefully be part of that. Uh, flow of the ideas that the piece brings up. I think it's very much that sense of play that flows into a uh, dis discussion within, you know, often an art space or um, kind of politically inflected space. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's really, really interesting. And uh, um, uh, we, we received another question, but before asking that, um, I was thinking about this experience, you know, like the aesthetic experience, because when, when you talk, when you were talking about the installation itself, and, and, and I, I've studied a lot about installations in relation to film and cinema, and it's very, and, and, and also the way you say now, like, like I, I don't feel so much comfortable showing you, know, you just the five minute um, um, short, because Actually, it's not the experience itself, you know, the artists um, planned. So, but in this case, um, the installation is not that kind of installation that um, makes you walk through or the immersion experience is uh, so much like, uh, we're not talking about like huge screens or mm -hmm. the kind of uh, installation that you walk through, like, or you get into a dark, place and then suddenly something appears and you feel like surrounded by that space it's much okay. more like the space you create like uh, relating um, mainly to how uh, the sounds of the fully uh, background makes you you know like imagine all that situation so that's one thing that uh, I found that's really interesting that how they expose the process but at the same time the, the process of the, the fully um, sounds 
they also uh, they also create that the immersion. That is not like mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. much um, w- uh, so much elaborated in the immersion itself. You know, the spatial mm-hmm. immersion mm-hmm. itself, but it's like a more uh, more like um, oh, what's the word for that? I just forgot it. More like um, oh my god, I just forgot that in in Portuguese too. Uh, it's not an inspiration. It's like you know the first the first flame you receive just for you to create that that sense of space, right? That's what mm-hmm. I found that's really interesting. I don't know if you if you if you um, analyze that or not because that's something that's um, really a dialogue with the the, con- the the concept of imaginary topo- topology. I told you, and and that's. Uh, really um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. drives my attention. I don't know if you if you analyze mm-hmm. that or not. Or yeah, I think it's something that I want to think think through more. And I th- yeah, your feedback is really helpful in that regard uh, because um, the experience is yeah two channel installation, but it uh, also plays with stereo sound in an interesting way. Yeah. You, if you're wearing headphones, you can hear that the two monitors are very much you know, separated, um, the Foley sounds and the, um, the uh, voice voiceover. Uh, and, uh, and then with the, the props in the space, it becomes you know, more interactive, but I think it's kind of modest technologically compared to what happens in um, drill the Hito sterile piece with the huge, you know, three screens. Um, and I guess I don't want to make pronouncements beyond what I um, feel comfortable saying, <laughs> but I think, uh, it, it, but it may be interesting to consider in the context of this symposium, kind of with the legacies of um, expanded cinema are um, within. Um, this uh, kind of maybe uh, late in the documentary turn in the contemporary arts scene where there can be an installation like um, Hito Sterils with drill in the, a kind of blockbuster space like the Park Avenue Armory, um, which you know had been used as an, as an actual armory in New York. So it has this history of um, uh, 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 housing and practicing you know, with firearms and then as part of the uh, birth of the National Rifle, Rifle Association or the NRA, and the, connected to the shift in the um, in the right right wing and militarization of the country, um, and how the uh, I think I have I appreciate a lot about the piece, and it's very earnest. But I think it, it, my criticism of you know Sterl's piece wouldn't be the the piece itself necessarily, but and the stage of you know the blockbuster, um, immersive, you know, expanded cinema piece, um, when uh, it, it's been um, uh, commodified by uh, the kind of pillars of um, the art market uh, in um, a major major city, um, and I think that there's something to be said for what aspects of expanded cinema. Are carried on in a modest inst- installation like La Distancia versus what are not possible in um, a kind of blockbuster um, uh, space like the Park Avenue Armory, and like how much even a very earnest message about um, the gun violence, uh, you know, just mass emergency in the U.S. kind of uh, fall flat and how it positions itself. Um, not to completely dismiss the piece, but I think that's part of the juxtaposition I was getting at. Um, I think, yeah, maybe it has something to say about the legacies or status of expanded cinema practice and the possibilities of, you know, community spaces and, um, you know, galleries that maybe many of the participants may be practicing in collaboration with here um, in, in Brasilia or, or, else, or elsewhere. Um, that could engage with those legacies more more fully. Great. So this is the initial thought without yeah. wanting to make no, big pronouncements. It's, yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah. 
Um, we have, so I think, uh, one last question. So I'll just, I'm, I'm just reading it in Portuguese again and translating it. Uh, so in Portuguese, um, como você analisa a potência do cinema expandido para a dimensão dos afetos em drill? Em termos epistemológicos, há alguma perspectiva específica com a qual você trabalha para construir um caminho metodológico apto a analisar os afetos nos cinemas expandidos? Um, so in English it would be like, uh, how do you analyze the possibilities on expanded film to think mm -hmm. about the dimension of the effects in drill? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, so in an epistemological term, in, in epistemological terms, is there mm -hmm. any specific perspective with which you work to build a methodological way of analyzing these uh, effects in expanded movie, uh, cinema? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the the question. Um, I think that that's. Uh, yeah, frankly, something I'm working out, uh, but I think maybe the initial comparison um, uh, on a very you know, straightforward level uh, is just between La Distancia and Drill uh, is the fact that they're two pieces that kind of use a script with La Distancia, this uh, translation um, of uh, the letter correspondence between um, uh, Adorno and Marcusa, and then uh, with uh, Drill, the composition um, by the uh, Yale uh, Technical uh, mar Marching Band, um, and how in that process of kind of audioization, so kind of the cinematization and you know audio audioization. Um, in the in the piece, um, and I, I wouldn't. Uh, I think that the the earnest earnesty of the of the piece, um, which I think is refreshing, a refreshing shift from a lot of the kind of uses of the essay film form, in like the contemporary art world that I see, um, which you know yes use you know humor, um, you know very effectively in their. Uh, critique, but I think the earnesty of the piece, you know, from uh, Sterl is really um, compelling. I think what I'm maybe more grappling with in um, the project is how uh, how much it was criticized by um, other art art critics uh, as uh, uh, um, in, in ineffective or uh, kind of speaking to the choir um, in uh, in a way. Uh, and uh, maybe not effectively using the the, the stage of the um, the space in which it was uh, exhibited. So I wouldn't um, I wouldn't say that uh, uh, I'm doing an kind of an audience um, analysis, uh, but more uh, of a meta analysis of the criticism of the of the piece um, and how it could be connected uh, to um, different kind of executions of this uh, a tendency of um, kind of translating an existing uh, s script or you know, score um, into the, the essay film form with some expanded cinema uh, components. So it's really that kind of uh, pre-existing you know, uh, script element um, and its uh, execution or you know, translation into uh, uh, moving image and sound um, that I'm using as a point of comparison um, and then discussing and then here kind of reflecting on the uh, the different spaces of exhibition and um, uh, distribution and the kind of the critical discussion around that uh, but yeah I'd be happy to to you know, hear hear more about the, um, the 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 possibilities of of uh, looking at the reception of these works in different different places. That's really great too. And I don't know if we have um, any more questions. Um, let me check here just in the YouTube chat if someone has. Okay. 
So no, so we, we don't have any more questions. So um, we'd, we'd like to um, um, let you, if you want to say a last word or anything, I don't know, just feel free to, to say, you know, what was your impression or if you want to say any, anything else, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I just want to say thank you for, for having me um, and for all of the participants, your attention and uh, patience. Um, I yeah, displayed my email. Feel free to reach out to me with um, any questions or follow-ups, especially for the students you know, participating. If this is a, at all of interest to you, I'm happy to um, have a back and forth uh, by, by email um, and expand on anything I mentioned in passing. Um, and I tend to speak quickly uh, when uh, I'm uh, th thinking through, especially my answer to uh, uh, questions, uh, but even you know moving through um, the ideas in the in the piece. So I apologize if I uh, 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 was not intelligible <laughs> at any moment. Um, and I really appreciate all the additional steps uh, for accessibility that you've all provided. Um, in, uh, in interpretation and, and making this accessible to the to the participants. Uh, yeah, thank you so uh, much. Thank you so much, Professor Joel, uh, Professor Anderson. I, I, I just, you know, uh, I, I just call him Joel, so he's... <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Gabriella, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for uh, accepting our invitation. It was a really interesting discussion. Uh, that's really um, um, a matter, um, uh, an object I, I'm really passionate to study and my, my thesis was uh, always thinking about the aesthetics, um, um, aesthetics experiences and, and possibilities uh, in media art, you know, like because we can, uh, since we're talking from um, the communication um, uh, faculty, you know, and not faculty, um, college. Uh, we, we, we tend to, uh, here in our post-graduation program, uh, to um, discuss a lot about uh, media as well. So that's why I always uh, emphasize in, on media. But that's one thing that I think it's um, really interesting, the, the object you brought, you know, it's, uh, specifically the, the La Distancia film because it relates to like a theory that is so uh, close to the communication studies and, mm -hmm. and also all this uh, contribution about thinking at the language itself, you know, about uh, expanded cinema and the aesthetics and political and critical. Um, oh my God, I just forgot that the desdobramentos, Fabs, can you remember? Um, this, I, I, that's a moment. Not ramifications, but the the, the, um, the consequences, you know, of all this thinking. So it's it was really, really interesting having this discussion here today, and I really appreciate um, you had uh, the time for being here with us. And I hope, like, that's the beginning of other contributions or other mutual contributions. <laughs> Thank you. So so yes. much. <laughs> thank you. Okay, I'd like to thank you, Professor Anderson and Gabriela. I would like to thank the participation of Professor Anderson and Professor Gabriela, Joey, Gabi. <risos> e dizer que foi uma tarde muito proveitosa, eu gostei bastante das pesquisas, né, que a gente teve, é, a gente tem um grupo, we have a WhatsApp group that we discussed and other uh, things about this uh, interline um, uh, topic. topic, and it will be very important, mainly for our line, né? principalmente para a nossa linha de imagem, estética, cultura contemporânea, né? Esse, a sua contribuição, your contribution was so uh, important for us, thank you so much, and congratulations for your research in progress. Uh, our uh, post-graduation is open for you when you would like to um, integrate or think it together or um, collaborate. Thinking, 
what? Collaborate. Collaborate. Yes. Um, and uh, we are going to finish this afternoon. Gostaria de agradecer agora em português, né? Vou tentar aqui fazer um... É, agradecer especialmente aí, né? É, os palestrantes de hoje, mas também especialmente a Cris Santos, que é a nossa monitora, a Aline, que é a nossa backup, é a aluna que nos ajuda imensamente nessa, nessa atividade. Gostaria de agradecer a parceria com a professora Nélia, da, da linha de Poder e Processos Comunicacionais, a nossa diretora da faculdade, Jane Moura, que esteve presente aqui no, no, no chat, né? a todas, todos, todos presentes da nossa PPG, e é, desejar uma excelente semana para vocês, thank you so much, Joanne Gabi, e até a próxima. Nice to meet you. Bye. Thank you, an honor to be with you. Take care. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much, Joe. Thank you. It was wonderful. <laughs> okay, ciao, Chris.